On today's iCave Dave, iOS 17 releases today. Why the iPhone 15 has slow USB speeds, bigger iMacs, the end of SIM cards, spatial video, M-powered Apple TVs, and is A17 a disappointment? And don't miss that one, we've got benchmarks. I'm iCave like Dave and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. And if you want the latest Apple news, leaks and rumors, like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. Now the biggest changes that are coming in iOS 17, which is releasing today, I've only picked out a few of them, but these are the ones that I think make the most difference in the real world for people. There are things like the improved dictionary, using transformer models, which is kind of AI for autofill, I guess. Um, but the stuff that's gonna make most difference that's most noticeable name drop that is basically where you can use like an airdrop style system but you just tap two phones together and it pops your contact information over to each other and along with that contact posters which basically means that you can create and you should probably do this quite soon because people will want to play with the feature you can create like a contact well poster that's got an image that you like whether that's a emoji or a good picture of yourself or something that represents you or your business or something along those lines and uh, it goes along with the way that your name and everything else looks and that gets sent over via this name drop too the other big change is standby of course which I've been using literally since the day that uh, the first betas came out and I love it. Anytime that your iPhone is charging and it's laying down in kind of landscape mode, but kind of stood up, but landscape mode, it changes to a little home display, which is quite nice. You can have a clock on the one side, you can have things like calendar stuff going on on there. It's quite customizable. There's quite a few different options on it. And this is obviously something that Apple can in future, like the, uh, the Apple Watch display, add more features to so i'm quite excited by this one i think it's really good and it's perfect for if you have one of those little magsafe uh, stands but you can do this with wired as well but a magsafe stand for on your desk or your bedside table or something along those lines where you charge all your stuff so those are the biggest features that i'm looking forward to you've also got interactive widgets coming which i think is pretty cool too especially for like home kit stuff but let me know down in the comments what is your most anticipated new feature in iOS 17. Next up, why iPhone 15 has uh, slower USB speeds. And I believe this was worked out by our friends over at Constant Geekery, who casually threw it out in their roundup of the Apple event. Now, the controllers for USB are built into the SOC itself. And of course, our base iPhone models now use the previous year's Pro iPhone chip, which is in this case the A16. Now we're gonna be talking about the A17 Pro later in the show, but as the A16 only had the USB 2 controller on board for the Lightning connector last year, that's still all it has on board for this year too. On the other hand, of course, the chances are that next year's base iPhone will have the chip at least based on the A17 Pro, if possibly binned with less available graphics cores or something like that, but that would suggest that next year, the base iPhones will have the faster USB uh, 3.1 transfer speeds as well, which means 10 gigabits per second instead of uh, 480 megabits per second, which is much slower. It's about 1 20th of the speed. Stand by for everyone and their mum to tell you that Apple caved and it was all because of the outrage about the lower speeds that they were forced to include faster transfers in the iPhone 16. That's almost certainly not going to be the case. It will have just been waiting for the chip to filter down to those base models. Anyway, now that's out of the way, let's get to your questions. And there are some really good ones today. As always, I gave answers down in the comments to get your question featured in a future show. Let's get started. Evan Rogers asks, IK of Answers, when do you think that Apple will release a new iMac Pro or a larger regular iMac? You're not gonna like this answer, Evan. I don't think they will. I really don't. I, I know we've talked about it in the past. We've talked about it, this daddy iMac that was potentially coming. But my honest, honest opinion is that that is just a larger display that you can then hook up to a Mac Mini or a Mac uh, Studio or a Mac Pro. This gives it a much more modular kind of feel. It makes a lot more sense. I don't know why everyone wants there to be an iMac Pro again. There was only ever one generation of iMac Pro and that one generation was very much a fill in for time between the 2013 trash can Mac Pro and between the 2019 new cheese grater Mac Pro. I really don't think Apple has ever intended to have an iMac Pro as a part of their regular lineup. I think it was very much a one and done. I think that is all we're getting from that. Now on the bigger iMacs, 
I can see the kind of the the love that people have for it because I have a 27 inch IMAX sitting up here, uh, which we are going to be using as the basis for Project Quadra, which as I've mentioned in the past, is going to have like four different operating systems on it, possibly including Steam OS, which will be quite fun. But I think that 24 inch uh, form factor that they've got right now is a really good size. And remember that this is a base level computer. This is designed to be the computer for the masses. The iMac originally only came in one size. It was only when they got to the next generation that they went up to multiple sizes. So maybe that's when they'll do it with this as well in the second generation of Apple Silicon. But it just doesn't quite make sense to me because you're then throwing away a big old display and pros tend to like to have the fastest hardware and a nice display, but why would they get rid of the nice display to then... Do, do you see where I'm coming from here? Next up, MRNH asks, IK answers, how long do you think we have until the SIM tray is removed from non-USA iPhones? Could it be a progressive rollout to various regions before a global launch? Since much of tech YouTube is US-based, a non-SIM iPhone rumor would not be considered newsworthy. I absolutely think that uh, if this was on its way uh, immediately, then it would be considered newsworthy, um, especially because uh, we're not just talking about YouTube here, we're talking about multiple outlets that are based around the world. Uh, Supercharged is based in Saudi Arabia, uh, Mac Rumors is based in the States, but they've got UK correspondents, uh, people like Hartley, the, you know, there are a lot of Apple journalists based around the world and it is news for us. Um, so I, I don't think it would be disappearing, but no, we've still got the uh, SIM slots this year. I think next year makes sense. Like, just get rid of them. We don't need them. As long as Apple knows that these things are uh, going to be going away, they can let the carriers know because pretty much every country now can use eSIMs if they want to. It's just whether they actually want to. And if the iPhone only takes eSIMs, they will very quickly want to. MRNH asks, uh, IK answers, hello, will the 3D image recording be available for the base iPhone 15 and older iPhones since it's using the ultra wide and wide lenses or will it be exclusive to the 15 Pros? Done a little bit of research and it seems like exclusive to the 15 Pros right now. I don't know, they could roll it out to other devices. I can't see it going to the base models. And the reason for that is that the arrangement of those cameras is a bit wonky. So it would be like having your eyes at different heights so that would be a very strange thing uh, for them to do. I could see them coming to the to the 14 generation Pros, uh, but it might also be that they've got faster controllers in there for um, writing to the chips, uh, which is potentially required in order to get two high quality streams both going in at the same time, if that makes sense. But as far as we know, there is no information about uh, that spatial video being able to be recorded on anything but the 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max. And I do want to just point out, I did predict spatial video recording. I thought it was going to use the LiDAR instead of the two cameras, but I wasn't far off. Um, and I don't think anyone else predicted it. Let me know if you saw anyone else talking about that before the event. Evan Rogers asks, I gave answers, do you think Apple will ever put the M chips in the Apple TV? Uh, I don't. I don't think we need an M chip in the Apple TV. That is a full on Mac chip. But the A17 Pro, which we're about to be talking about next, has essentially the performance of the M1. That could happen. Team Kinetics Media asks, I gave answers, now that the dust has settled, what's with the modest increase in power on the A17 Pro SoC? The GPU cores are the star of the show, but 10% increase in CPU performance and no battery life improvements is less than anticipated. And this is where it gets more interesting. I don't think it is a modest increase. Um, I think the battery is going to be better. What Apple has done is advertised it the same. But remember, there is a huge controversy right now about the iPhone 14. Uh, pro batteries and the fact that they're not really performing as well as they should. So if Apple had advertised a longer battery life and not hit that, that would be an issue. If they advertised the same as the iPhone 14 started with and it's actually better, that's a much better place for Apple to be. Now the batteries are bigger, but I would also say it doesn't sort of matter that much. Um, as long as the battery lasts you for a full working day, uh, that's actually okay. And the vast majority of us do have uh, chargers and cables and MagSafe and stuff nearby. So it's not a huge issue. That A17 Pro chip is as fast in multi-core as the M1 was, and that's three generations later. That is impressive. It also has that ray tracing, which has been added, which is huge. Uh, that will be coming to M3, I 
almost guarantee. It's also got the, the faster neural engines. It's also got a lot of other stuff in there. And I don't think it's really fair to say this is an underwhelming chip update. I think it is a very cool chip update, but I am very interested to see how it's going to perform in the real world and how that then translates over. But I would also say now that we've got USB 3 built into these chips uh, and we've got decent graphics and we've got M1 level performance, my theory about the uh, cheaper MacBooks being based on an A17 chip, an A17 Pro, seems to hold a lot more weight because that's M1 level performance and it's a couple of years newer so it's not gonna expire as quickly in terms of support. I think this is a, a very legit way that Apple could go about things now and now they've got 10 gigabit per second transfer speeds built into that USB, um, USB 3.1 hub. I think that's legit. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you've got a question for a future show, hashtag IK Advances down in the comments section. Thank you to the Patreons over here, and we'll see you in the next one. Want the latest Apple news, leaks, and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell.